Welcome to the MuseCast, where we squeeze every last drop of inspiration out of Sunday's sermon. My favorite part of Tuesday! Welcome to the MuseCast, everyone. As soon as I get those Dan Kemp fingers, we are raring and ready to go. And literally, it's my favorite part of Tuesday until gathering groups come around. And then that becomes my favorite part of Tuesday. Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, we're um, we're starting our trek, our voyage home, and enjoying the last couple days of tolerable weather. And uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm it's sort of a weird feeling where it's uh, I want to stay where it's warm, um, and the air is better for my skin. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I miss being at home with all my things, and mm-hmm. you know, I know exactly where you know these felt tip pens are. I know where that book is, and you know, so I, I, I kind of miss some of that stuff. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to being home. We're looking forward to having you home. It'll be Yay. great. And the weather has started warming just in time for your and Barbara's yeah. trek back north. So yeah. just for you guys, the weather decided to cooperate a little bit. Well, I tell you, I'll just say this. Uh, 33, 34 degrees, that's, that's not good enough. You, you have to do better. <laughs> so I, I've, you got to uh, do better. <laughs> yeah. I've we I've submitted got up to 43 yesterday, Dan. That's it's a good start, but I have submitted <laughs> a Yelp review and let's just say it's not good. All right. Okay, Minnesota. <laughs> we gotta do better. We have to up our game if we want to get Dan back home. So let's do it. I think we're hey, up for the challenge. I, I gotta All say right. something. Um yeah. You uh you look like you are emerging from abstract art. It's so cool. <laughs> I know, right? Like I told you guys, it is so hard. I think you'll appreciate this, Dan, but like, you know, the move and um and getting your office set up, like it doesn't feel like you're settled until like you have all the things. And so this is like the gradual process of yep. getting things set up. So every week, hopefully. <laughs> There'll be a little bit more, a little bit more, and then it'll feel like, okay, there we go. Shauna is all my, ready. My favorite part of moving into a new place is setting up my bookshelf and putting yes. all the books in all the right yes. places. And then thinking, you know, maybe I should organize this uh, categorically by philosophy, theology, mm-hmm. fiction, psychology. No, I think instead I'll do, and just like organizing all that. And then here's the key is you want to make sure all of the, the book ends are flush. And so you got to make sure it's all yes. flush and smooth. I just, yes. it's a weird thing, but I love organizing No, you bookshelf. and my husband Scott are like two birds of a feather flocking <laughs> together with that. Like he's not been able to set up his books yet. So I think he's really raring to go because he has so many. So he, he knows like he has a diagram of how all the bookshelves are going to go. And it's going to be like library stacks even. Like wow. it'll be like little mini hallways and stuff. You can go down with back to back. But um, the man has quite a few um, books. Mm. So that's intense. He'll be happy once he gets it all set up. Yeah. Well, this past weekend, this past Sunday, we concluded our When We Pray mini series within the Sermon on the Mount mega series. And yeah. we had Tara Beth joining us from her home in Chicagoland, the beauty of technology. And we just wrapped it up. And, and then we, ha- we got to hear from Dan, not you from Greg and Rob, just some uh, tangible ways in which they can participate in prayer in the life of Woodland Hills Church. So I thought that was really cool. But now it is time, Dan, for your summary yeah. of Tara Beth's message. And then we'll talk about it a little bit. And this may be a shorter newscast today, and that's okay. Yeah. Because, you know, not everything has to be long and drawn out. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so t- t- and part of the reason why this is a short uh, you know, uh, episode is because the sermon was short, first of all. And also the sermon was uh, kind of focused on a-, a pretty simple topic. It's just it's a very important topic, but it's very simple. And I think that those are good sermons to have because, you know, when I do a sermon, I'm always looking for like, you know, like intrigue and like what's really interesting about this and what what um, what part of life does this teaching overthrow in a person's life and how does 
does this go against what you know the what the world says and so and i i like to get in the weeds but but sometimes it's good to just have a simple message and say look this is what the bible says about this and and so that's kind of what what uh what tara beth did is she just showed the importance of corporate prayer and um, and it worked so well because then we have this international crisis for which we decided let's do this corporate prayer together for what's going on in the Ukraine and um, and so it really served as an opportunity a springboard to actually put the sermon immediately right into practice and I, I thought that worked out really well but uh, sort of getting into the weeds a little bit about what Tara Beth said, she, she really kind of focused about how, on the church as sort of like a, like a, a, a grove of sequoia trees. And, and it's, you know, prayer, we should think about prayer like that, where, yeah, each tree in this grove is going to have its own personal needs and, and whatever, but the strength of any individual tree in a sequoia grove is going to be largely dependent on the strength of the rest of the trees because the roots all work together and they all intermingle to make one another stronger. And she used that as sort of a metaphor to talk about uh, corporate prayer where, you know, together um, we should be praying um, uh, and, and that makes it more effective for each of us as, as individuals. She also talked about the role of corporate prayer in dealing with sin within the church. And uh, she looked at um, Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20, and, and sort of the progression of this passage kind of talks about if a brother or sister sins, what do you do? And what Jesus teaches is that you individually go and confront them on it and express your concern with them. And if that convinces them, then hallelujah, then you can all go about your, your business. If that doesn't, then you bring another brother or sister in so that there's a group of people um, to kind of discuss this, this issue. And if that doesn't work, then you bring the whole church body in on it. Um, and then uh, if that doesn't work, well, then maybe it's time to to disconnect with with that with that brother or sister or to give that brother or sister space to work out whatever they need to work out. And and that I think her point to all of that is that we are a body and like our individual behaviors reflect on what who we are as as um as a, a people group. And, um, and, and that's such a, a counterintuitive way of thinking about it, especially in America where everything is so individualistic. It's all about me and my personality and look at who I am and I'm an influencer and people want to be like me. And it's just me, 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 me. Uh, the Bible is all about we, 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 we. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't, that's, I'm not speaking French there. That's like the collective. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it's 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 a cool way to look at it because because now my individual behaviors isn't just about this is who I am but this is also now I'm an ambassador for this larger group that is the the church that I'm a part of and um and so uh it, just that corporate element becomes so important again yeah so that's that's my sermary uh what did you think of of uh the sermon yeah, um, many of the same thoughts that you've shared here from the summary. And I will say this, I think it's so important to continually circle back to the community aspect of our faith because it is so vital. Um, and I know many times I and we can sound like a broken record, but um, we are not meant to go at this alone. And in, in here in America, I'm just going to say that, we are so used to the rugged, the, the, the rugged individual, right? Yeah. Like we can do this and we got this. And there is, there's a lot to be said for that, you know, like way to be strong, way to go. However, that's not the way it's meant to be. Like God is a relational God. Like there is father, son, and spirit. There, there is a unity there amongst the beings of who God is. And I think that over and again, we see in scripture that he desires for us to be a people of God, not a person of God. Yes, we are a person, but we are a part of a people. And so I really appreciated that emphasis. I think it's super important. And just the reminder that, you know what, when we come together as the people of God to pray, it is powerful. Not to say that that means it's a guarantee, because we've both experienced that, right, Dan, you've talked about it. I've talked about it when we've been in these 
moments of powerful corporate prayer and our desired outcome didn't happen. And we know we were praying the heart of God. We know we were praying the will of God, but there's so many other things that come into play. But I still think it's important to to remember, like when God's people come together in unity to pray, it's a powerful thing. So I really Mm -hmm. did appreciate that. Um, We can be so, like you said, I, 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 and that is just not um, the way of the kingdom. And I feel like, especially in the last couple of years, we've seen some of that. And I'm just going to shine a little bit of a light on, um, I'm just going to say the broad stroke of Christianity, because many people who have been like my rights, my individual uh, freedom, my, um, my, my religious freedom to not do or to do has really kind of been thrust forward mm-hmm. uh, in the limelight during the pandemic. And Jesus was all about self-sacrificing the love of others and community. And so I think this was a good reminder of mm-hmm. that. Good. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's, um, you know, it's it's tough because, you know, we do we are all individually responsible and we all have like our own relationship with God. Um, but God does call us together as a community. Uh, the the self is not an end in itself. The self is is sort of uh, meant and made for this interconnectedness. Mm-hmm. And and for me, that's really, really hard. I mean, it's it's the hardest part of faith is this social uh, kind of dimension because yeah. I, I am um, an individualistic kind of person yeah. where I'm just like, yeah. I, I, with everything, it's like, I, I want to... Um, like if I have a theological issue, I'm I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go figure it out. I'm gonna go study it, and I'm gonna you know, I, I've I've never been like a church authority kind of person. I just I want to go study. That's why I'm not a Catholic. I'm just you know I'm a Protestant because that's sort of the spirit of Protestantism is that we each have our own Bible and we each you know uh, have our own relationship with God and 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 so it's really it is really hard for me to think corporately. Um, but I think that's what we're called to. And, um, and I think that's what we're made for. Uh, yeah. and you just see it so often in, in, uh, social psychology research and so much research is being shown, uh, you know, how the importance of, of social connection for individual thriving. And, and it's, it, I don't think it's, 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 it's one of those things where it's like, you would think that um, we would all do better on our own, like just from an evolutionary perspective, you know, you would do better on your own because you have to ensure your own survival. And, and you look at like how, you know, communities and how cities and how uh, governments basically ruin people's lives. And, and you would think, man, we would, I would just do better on my own. And, and that I understand that impulse, but, um, the Bible has always said, no, you need to be part of a community. And I just love it when the Bible says things that don't seem like they're right, but then scientific research continues to show that that's the better way. And I, I just, I love that. And so it, it yeah. challenges, it challenges me especially, but I think it challenges a lot of us in, in the West in a good way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then for me, the most beautiful part and this is no slight to Tara Beth, but the most beautiful part was that we were able to, as a as a body, as a congregation, engage in corporate prayer for the people of Ukraine. Yeah. That to me was just like the most beautiful part of Sunday, uh, that we were able to actually practice what was being preached and to have some specific names that we could call out. And <clears throat> this leads to a question. So us coming together as a body of believers to pray for Ukraine, well, obviously, obviously that didn't just, it wasn't a magic wand Mm -hmm. that fixed the situation. There's still a, I'm just going to go ahead and call it a a mini war, a a pre-war at least going on. Like another, a civilian city was invaded and civilians have been killed since Sunday. So we know that coming together to pray corporately, as beautiful as it was, as important as it was, wasn't a magic wand that fixed the situation. Um, So I'm saying that was actually my favorite part of Sunday that we could do do that because it felt like it was so necessary. But then how do we deal with Dan? This is leading to the question. How do you deal with the fact that 
we we know the power of of corporate prayer. We know what it what it can mean for God's people to come together in unity to pray. But then when we don't see the immediate result, how do we not throw up our hands and just be yeah. like, what's the point? Right. Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, a big part of it for me is um, expectation. Like, what mm -hmm. am I expecting? Because for me, it's like when I pray something, I'm already imagining a result. Uh, like, what is this going to lead to? And and the fact is, is that there's an infinite amount of things that can happen as a result of prayer. And my ability to predict what the result of the prayer itself is going to be is is sort of silly. I mean, it's it's silly in how how ineffective it is. Uh, so it's possible that we could pray as a corporate body that that uh, Putin would just withdraw all of his troops and end this whole thing. And boy, wouldn't that be great if we prayed that and then it happened. Uh, but that did not happen yet. Um, and so the question is, is what if that doesn't happen? What if the war escalates? And what if it goes and goes and goes until Ukraine is just defeated and Russia takes over the the country and um what good was the prayer well the fact is is that it, the prayer could have done all sorts of good stuff that we didn't even know about and it could have maybe certain people might be spared in this uh war because of our prayer maybe um or maybe because of the the um the horror of the war itself, it might lead to a positive reaction uh, because of it. Or, I mean, there's just so many different, like, you know, we'll never do that again sort of thing. Uh, there's yeah. just, there's so many different positive things that could happen as the result of the prayer. And so I, I think that the question, the, the the call that we have is to, to pray together for things. Um, we're not called to have expectations of what's going to happen. Um, we're just called to do it. And so I, one of the things that I've challenged myself is, um, are Dan, like just talking to myself, Dan, are you willing to continue to pray even if none of your prayer expectations are met? Mm. What yeah. if not, the rest of your life, what if not a single one of your prayer expectations are met? Are you still willing to pray? And I, I think God wants me to say yes to that uh, mm -hmm. because I, I, we, I don't know all of the things that can happen because of it. And so um, that, I guess that's, that's what I would say. And um, but it, man, it, 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 having the expectations, it's hard not to have those expectations yeah. and it, it, it hurts when you have the expectation and it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got to pick mm. ourselves up and keep, keep at it. Absolutely. It's a part of the journey. And also I know because we've been in communication with some folks um, that we are connected to in the Ukraine, mm. them knowing that we're praying for them Mm -hmm. all the way over here in the yeah. U.S., all the way over here in Minnesota and the Twin Cities, it helps bolster their faith yeah. and their resolve and knowing that not only are we praying, but we're calling upon all of our kingdom community around the world to be praying. It wow. helps them. So maybe yeah. we didn't see, and, and I still pray that we do because it's horrific what's happening. Yeah. Maybe we didn't see an end to, to the abhorrent violence. Um, but, but I do know that it's been an encouragement to know that there is support, Absolutely. um, for, for yeah. those folks all the way over here. So I think that matters. That has yeah. to be said. And that's, that's, uh, that's a really that great matters. point. That's a great point because like, if I were in an experience where, uh, you know, it, it was a dangerous experience and maybe I was being threatened by somebody and yet I knew that like I had some fellow believers who were aware of what I was experiencing and they were intentionally getting together and praying for me. I, I would feel that I would feel loved. I would feel like they care about me. I would feel connected to them that we are in this together. And so there would be that unification there. And also um, I would have hope that God will make some good out of this. God, God, God can now, um, do things that maybe God couldn't do without the prayer. And so yeah. I, I just, I think that's a really good point for sure. Yeah. yeah. And what an honor, what an honor it is too, mm -hmm. to be part of a community uh, that has people in all of these places. And I, you know, for our Ukraine brothers and sisters and, and people who have, have uh, lamented what they're experiencing, I just, I feel honored to be a part of their community. And, um, and it's just what a blessing that, that yeah. we can have a worldwide reach like that. 
Absolutely. The fact that this is going on there and we had people that immediately knew they could reach out to us. Yeah. That's incredible. The fact that we could go into our database to see where are our connections there and they were there. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That is beautiful to me. And so hear us on this. We, we stand and support <laughs> fervent prayer and belief that, that Jesus will be a fence, that God's peace will prevail um, and that he will be a comforter in the midst of this dark time because mm -hmm. it is very serious. Um, I'd like to end on this uh encouraging question dan and this is going to challenge you a little bit put you on the spot a little bit but like i said earlier you and i have both shared here with our newscast community about moments in our lives where we for really big important things um where we came together in these corporate prayer times for a person or individual for healing or for something really significant and our desired outcome didn't come to pass and how we deal with that and we've talked about that through the series, right? The different variables that go into when, when prayer doesn't get answered. Yeah. But what I'm asking you now is given that and simultaneously given still our call to come together again as God's people over and again to unify in prayer and petition and supplication for our community and for others, um, how do you continue to do that to lean into that especially given your more individualistic nature so yeah. for those out there who say ah ugh, that's just not who i am that's not how i'm wired what is your encouragement to those to yeah. lean into this not all the time but there are times and occasions in which we need to come together as a body um to pray for others mm. Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is um, anytime you're learning something new, you're always going to push yourself past a boundary where, no, that's just not who I am. You know, if you want to learn how to swim, I mean, even learning how to swim when, when you don't know how to swim you have to jump in the water where you could drown and, and you're going to be thinking, well, that's just not who I am because it's not, you can't swim yet. But in order to learn how to swim, you, you have to put yourself in that situation. And so um, the first thing I would say is God calling us in, to be corporate minded, to be um, interpersonally minded. I think that challenges all of us in a way that that's not yet who we are, but it's who God mm -hmm. wants us to be. And so we have to uh, live into that and, and so for me, what really helps is to just think of it as um, um, it's it's my duty. And I do it not because it's a natural expression of who I am, but it's something that I want to be who I am. I want that. I want whatever God wants for me in calling me to that. I want to faithfully pursue it. Um, I'm very comfortable in an individualistic society. Uh and that fits very nicely with my default personality and all of that. But I also trust that God uh, wants the best for me and he wouldn't call me into something else if it wasn't good for me. And so as an act of duty and as an act of trust in God, I, I, I do my best to, to continue to pursue that. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's what I would, would say. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. What, what kind of, what kind of, uh, wisdom do you have for me <laughs> yeah i just i would say that you know remember god loves you and desires to hear from you and imagine if he desires that for you as an individual child how much more so he he delights in when his children come together in unity for a joint purpose um and I just, I just think that's a beautiful thing, not to stroke his ego, but just out of trust and um, faith to, to come together to say, we agree that this is something that we need to be um, seeking you on. I think that's a, that's a, I think that's a beautiful thing. I'm also reminded of Woodland Hills Church, who we are now today, the fact that we do have a reach into the lives of people in the Ukraine and all around the world wouldn't have happened if it weren't for people coming together to pray for breakthrough in certain areas of our journey. Um, I just, you know, when you hear stories of, about how we came together and how we felt led to be who we are, even the location that we're in, 
the obstacles that we came against and the times in which we had people come together specifically to pray for obstacles to be removed, for hindrances to, to fall away. And they did. And, and we are where we are um, and in, in direct part because of that. And so it helps me to reflect back to see the times in which um, God did meet his people and, um, and to know that what, okay, this is going to sound very simple, but what harm can come, right? right? Like if we just decide we're going to come together and pray, like you and I were a part of something like that yesterday for a member of our staff, like our pastoral mm -hmm. team felt led to come together and pray for someone who's struggling with some health issues. And what, what harm was right. there in that? No, only, only good things, you know, showing support encouragement and really calling out to our our father for for help and and um intervention in the situation so yeah yeah um that's what i yeah, think that's that. i think that's that's a, that's really good i think that's right it's it, it's interesting that like um you know god in the old testament and the new testament is a god of covenant and covenant mm -hmm. is like this relationship structure that we enter into and we kind of live by the stipulations of the covenant and and a lot of times there's uh god will test his covenant representatives and and to see if they will be faithful or not and it's it's, it's always interested me because it's like well God, if God is omniscient, he knows our hearts and he knows our thoughts. What's the point of the test? And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think there's a couple things about that. The first thing is, um, we really have genuine say so we could choose otherwise and so the test really does show god something that he wants to know what will we do will we be faithful or not uh, but the, the second thing is um i think that it's good for us to to do what we are expected to do as an as a uh, as proof as evidence of where we are at for ourselves uh to to show us who we are and i i think of of peter when when you know he he tells jesus i will never leave you i will stand by your side till to the death and jesus is like no you, you don't really know yourself peter you, you, right. you think you think you're all that and you think you're you know the superhero but as soon as there's any pressure you're gonna crack and that's when he did the famous before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And, and Peter needed to see that, to see that his faith wasn't as strong as he thought it was. So, so it works both ways, where if we fail, that's actually good news because we see that we're not what we thought we were. And if we succeed, then we are affirmed in our faithfulness. And, and I think the call to pray as a body could be just that as well, where, you know, um, are you going to be faithful to God and pray together as, as a group? Uh, there's something about actually doing it that um, tests where we're at. And uh, yeah, so that's awesome. a huge tangent. No, it's all right. So to close this out, Dan, I'm going to direct your nugget. Okay. <laughs> That's a weird sentence, right? I'm going <laughs> to direct your nugget. Um, I would like for your nugget to, because we've, we're, we've closed out the When We Pray mini series, like we said mm -hmm. earlier in the, in the broadcast, um, and we're going into a, a new series. And so for your nugget today, I would like for you to leave the MuseCast folks with a little teaser, a little, you yeah. know, a little preview of what is to come. Yeah. Um, well, it's uh, the, the title of the series is going to be something like Treasure Hunters. And it's it's gonna all be, it's gonna be about um, the end of Matthew chapter six uh, that talks about our treasure whether it's on earth or whether it's in heaven, and it, there's a lot of discussion on money and our relationship to money. But really, the discussion of money there is about all types of power, not just financial power. It could be intellectual power, it could be your sense of humor, it could be your looks, it could be all sorts of. There's a lot of powers that we have, and um, uh, Luke tells us to. Uh, avoid all kinds of greed and and so we can have greed and and make an idol out of all sorts of different things and so we're going to be looking and exploring 
all of those types of, of elements. And I think that it's, it's going to be because we, we end up having a lot of anxiety in life that we don't necessarily need to have. And I think that um, it, Matthew puts, I'm going way too long on this. I'm so sorry. Right, but Matthew, right. Matthew puts this, this uh, money stuff. And then afterwards he talks about being free from anxiety. And I think personally that uh, the teachings on the money is largely related to a lot of the anxiety that, that we have to wrestle with. And so I think this is going to be a foundational series for what comes right after it which is about anxiety which affects so many of us so yeah I, i'm really looking forward to it and i get to do a sermon in this series as well so I'm, I'm looking forward to that so yeah that was one of the the little tidbits i wanted you to kind of uh put out there for folks that we're gonna get to hear from Dan. yeah yeah and then he gets to be here on the newscast and go a little deeper so that <laughs> is right. awesome it's That's always right. a good time yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Um, I will uh, look forward to seeing you in the flash eventually mm -hmm. soon. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for your engagement. And just thank you for being a part of this amazing, beautiful, fun part of our work uh, at Woodland Hills. We absolutely love the newscast and we love you guys. So thank you. Be sure to tune in this weekend as we start this new series and circle back with us next week as we continue the conversation. Have a great rest of your, rest of your week, everyone. <laughs> yeah.